So I don't know, do you ever think about things that are imaginary, like unicorns, or leprechauns, or the tooth fairy, or, well, of course, tooth fairy's real, but you know, we get the idea. Things that are really, I mean, let's face it, I'm thinking about things that are imaginary. That's right, yes, isn't it nice? We're in a happy place now. But really, sometimes things that are imaginary are required because they're just not real. You know, they're just not real. Let me show you something that just ain't real. In fact, you may remember when you're taking like square roots, if I said to you, what's the square root of minus 9? What you've got to say there is you've got to say, okay, no problem. I've got to find some number that when I multiply it by itself, it's going to equal minus 9. Well, now, wait a minute. If I take a number and multiply it by itself, whether it's positive or negative, when I multiply by itself, it becomes positive, unless it's zero, in which case then it's zero. There's no way that I'm going to be able to take two numbers, multiply them together, and get a negative 9. So this is just not going to happen. This is just not real. Not real. So therefore, it must be imaginary. Let's pretend. It's pretend time. Now, if we were to pretend Let's just pretend for a second that this really was some sort of wacko number. Well, what would we say about it? So now let's just have a little fantasy. So a little imaginary fantasy never hurts. I could write this, for example, as minus 1 times 9. And then I can use properties of exponents, because remember, a square root is just an exponent of 1 half, and say that's just square root of minus 1 times the square root of 9. Now, the square root of 9, I happen to know that. There's no imagination required for that. That's just 3. Cut and dry. Cut and dry. So I couldn't write the 3 out in front, in fact. 3. And then I've got that square root of minus 1. So it's the square root of minus 1 that's sort of the imaginary part. You see that? It's sort of this imaginary. Bling, 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 bling. It's not a real number. And in fact, we have a name for that. We call it I. I for imaginary. It's like my imaginary friend. OK, so if I call that i, and usually we use a fancy, we don't use a capital i because we don't make a big stink about it. We just use a lowercase i. You see? And that equals, stands for, it's not a real number. It's an imaginary number, uh, the square root of minus 1. So that's what this symbol means. By the way, just a little trivia fact you can impress your friends with if you want, if they'd be impressed by this stupidity or not, that you know, if you're an engineering person, you know what they use? They use little j. That's right, they have the th thing sort of dangled this way. But who cares? Anyway, we'll use I because that's what it's supposed to be. The engineering people don't know what they're doing. Uh, oh, gee, that's. Okay. Anyway, okay. So, anyway, I'd write this as 3i. And that means it's 3 times this imaginary number. Okay, well, when you're armed with that, now you can start actually writing all sorts of numbers. Because what we can do is write what are called complex numbers, you see? complex numbers. There it is. And what a complex number is, something is a number that has i's in it. That's all. So for example, something like this. If I took 2 plus the square root of minus 9, I could write that in the following way. Well, I'll just keep the 2 there. But the square root of minus 9 we just saw is actually th the same thing as 3i. Because the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of minus 1 is i. So in fact, an imaginary number is any number that looks like this some real number plus a real number times i. So this is called a complex number. This number here is called the real part. This is the real part because it's just real. It's a real number. Now this part actually is the part that's the imaginary part. So this 3 is called the imaginary part. So the real part of this number is 2. The imaginary part of this number is 3. If I look at this number, how about 3 plus the square root of minus 25. I could write that, well, as 3 plus, and well, the square root of 25 is 5, but then I have the square root of minus 1, which is i. So this is a complex number, 3 plus 5i, and the real part is 3, and the imaginary part is 5. So now you can actually start dealing with imaginary numbers. And guess what? That means there must be imaginary arithmetic. Cool. We'll see that up next.